Umaga po sa kanilang lahat. Welcome to all of you. Welcome to the Filipino Ministry of Valley Baptist Church. Today is December 20 and thank you for joining us in our online broadcast today. So we would like to remember also the birthday celebrants in the month of December. Happy birthday to all of you and to those who have and will be celebrating their wedding anniversary. Again, um, happy anniversary po sa inyo pong lahat. Congratulations! Thank you and continue to praise the Lord. So today, before we start, let's open in a word of prayer. Great mighty God, we commit to you this time that we have been given by you, Lord God. This is such a privileged time for us to enjoy our life, to enjoy our energy, to enjoy this moment. And Lord, in one way or the other, the convenience of our own homes to be able to hear your word and somehow have fellowship with one another but most of all to have fellowship with you guide us now lord god as we hear your word read the scriptures and get to understand more what you want us to know more about you and what you want us to have change or be in us now you want to uh, encourage lord in us thank you lord god we humbly bow down before your throne in jesus name we pray amen You know, in our history, someone had said that the most amazing thing that man was able to accomplish was when he sent man to the moon. You know, in the scriptures, the most amazing thing is when God sent his son on earth. So tonight, or today, this morning, we remember that night wherein the Lord Jesus Christ was born in a lonely manger in that silent night. We are not thinking of God's plan, but God was thinking about us. On that silent night, the Prince of Peace was born to save our souls. As we sing this, let's remember that great act of the Lord. As we will remember this day. Thank you. 
Chapter 3, verses 17 through 21. Let us read this responsibly. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets, that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before. Let us read together. Whom, Whom heaven, heaven must receive until, until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. May the Lord bless his word in our lives. Let us prepare our hearts for the message. So good morning to you, brothers and sisters. So today is the 20th of December, Sunday, and I would like to welcome you to our ministry today. And again, I would like to thank all of you who have been with us for the past few months. It's always a joy to know that even if we are not able to see each other personally, you let us know that you are watching. The, those little notes you post in our Facebook, those are very good encouragements to us. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for your love and uh, your support. It's always a delight for me to bring before you the Word of God in as much as it truly is indeed a delight and a refreshing thing to study God's Word, to know His will, to know His Word, 
and eventually to know more about God. You know, the word refreshing is, I would think, I would say it's going to be our word for today. And I would be mentioning it many, many times in today's message. So let, let me ask you, when you hear the word refreshing, what images comes into your mind? What feelings comes into your in your heart? And uh, what events somehow uh, may um, remind you uh, of your life that you personally attach the word refreshed with? Diba? Yung refresh. You know, my wife would tell me that um, um, one of the refreshing feeling that we had and she also had was the first time we surrendered to full-time ministry. We were housed by Hong Kong Baptist Seminary and we were uh, given a room just fit for us, neat, clean, uh, good enough for the two of us. But you know, outside the seminary, just across its road, there is this seashore. Meron pong seashore, no? So the seminary is located at a fishing village. And this grand place is where we go to every morning. We relax and it is indeed a refreshing feeling as compared to all the city lights and the uh, public transport, the noises. Also, we do appreciate them, but this is something different. We never really expect this. It was something uh, of a bonus. It's a breath of fresh air. It relaxes. It can relax your nerves. And I believe it would enhance anyone's worship. You know, people would spend a lot of money to just to even have a glimpse or a feeling of this, even for a moment. But for us, we praise God. It's a bonus. It's free. All you have to do is wake up in the morning, show up in the seashore or in the beach and enjoy the scenery. You know, the feeling of being refreshed, somehow it varies to different people. Some people feel the refreshing feeling when, you know, they walk every day or walk in uh, in the morning. Some uh, feel it when they get to play with, you know, their pet dogs or they get the refreshed feeling when they go home to their family, spend time with their children, spend time with their spouses or with their loved ones or with their close friends. Some, you know, feel the feeling of refreshed uh, via trip to the mall or when they do the supermarket. You know, some of the guys have this feeling of refreshment when they go fishing or they go out to a hardware store or they go to the electronic store. And some even get this when you have those quiet moments reading a book or listening to a music or maybe playing a musical instrument or watching the sunset or the sunrise and simply being thankful to God for His faithfulness. Amen po ba? You know, today I would like to invite you to open your Bible to the book of Acts chapter 3 and we shall go over verses 17 to 21 in a message that I have entitled, Times of Refreshing in this season of hope. Times of refreshing in this season of hope. You know, the phrase times of refreshing was not a creative phrase conjured by yours truly, but it is a phrase that was found in one of the verses that we have just read a while ago, mentioned, uh, said by Apostle Peter himself. But the context of the phrase is more than just simply having an R&R &R or a uh, rest and recreation but it is for someone who has struggled a lot someone who had those emotional turmoils those emo emotional roller coaster someone who have not found peace or maybe for someone who thinks or she or he or she has found peace only to realize that there's something that there is something even more deeper than what they have and allow me to walk you through to the background and the context of our message for this morning. You know, it was during this time that the first church was already growing. They were spreading the good news of the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter and John was going around proclaiming the gospel. And there was this crippled man. The Bible says lame, lame man. Or it's a crippled man. And he saw them and he was begging money from them. Something that the beggar thinks that he needs to survive. He thinks he needs money. But Peter and John didn't have money at that time. But he said to them, he said to him, you know what, we do have something that we believe you would need more. And I remember in our Sunday school, there is this song that we always sing 
that tells the story of this event. And the lyrics of that song were the words of the Apostle Peter to this crippled man. And it goes something like this. I could still remember that. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Alam na alam ko pa po yung lyrics niyan. Walking and leaping and pray, saying God. Walking and leaping and praising God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yung po yung tono yun. Of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So, the man was healed that day. And for the first time in his life, he experienced what walking and leaping was all about. And that day, he became part of the world who can walk. He became part of the world who can leap. But you know, he did something more than the rest of the world usually does. You know what that was? He praised God. He worshiped. And in that day, not only was the day that he got healed physically, it was also a day he got healed spiritually. You know, people were amazed that this one crippled man, whom they, you know, they have scratched him off to be hopeless. But now they see him full of life. And the Bible says that he has been crippled since birth. And because of that truth, or with, with how they know the man, it caught the people's attention. Because his situation just stood up from the rest of what was happening that day. And he was worshiping. Somehow gives us an idea what is worship. What is true worship? Do you know that true worship is visible? Alam niyo po ba yon? Do you know that worship is not only mental, it is also emotional? And do you know that worship is also physical? That's why sometimes when we sing, we lift up our hands, you know? We involve our whole being because that's what worship is all about. The involvement of whole of your whole being. Now in Acts chapter 3 verse 8 to 10, let me read this to you. So, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. So he went to the temple with them because he knew that that kind of healing, whatever happened to him, did not come from mere ordinary man. It came from God. And he has that attitude of worship. And worship is the attitude that everything is because of God, not of men. The, this miracle caught the community's attention that they begin to gather and they begin to take notice of the messengers of the Lord. Who were they? Peter and John. And Peter began to take advantage of the situation and preach to them Jesus Christ. You see, there are moments in this world when the world gives their full attention to God. And as Christians, we should take advantage of it. And what more great occasion to talk about Jesus than Christmas. In Acts chapter 3, verse 12, So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? And in Acts chapter 3, verse 16, it reads, and his name, through faith in his name, made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So he said, you know, his name, his name is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ healed this man. It was not us. It was not our power. But you know what? This man who healed him happens to be crucified by you. You crucified him. You denied him. And you killed the Prince of Peace. So let's go back a few verse, verses in this chapter, Acts chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. But you denied the Holy One and the just 
and ask for a murderer to be granted to you and kill the prince of life whom God raised from the dead of which we are witnesses. So Jesus Christ says, uh, I mean, Peter says, you killed him, you crucified him, but you know what? God raised him from the dead. But Peter further says, but you know, don't worry because it's not yet too late. In Acts chapter 3 verse 19, this is what he said. Repent therefore and be converted and your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing. And it is from this verse that we hear that phrase, times of refreshing. The word refreshing in the original Greek word means a recovery of one's life or to be revived. In many of the people that I talked to, they said that the moment that they have repented of their sins, they, that they have asked Jesus to be their Savior, there seems to be that feeling of having a burden being lifted up of their shoulders. And somehow, it kind of jives with how we understand the word refreshing. Diba? Parang the upliftment of one's spirit. And this morning, I would like us to understand why is there that feeling of a burden being lifted up? Why it is so much about the understanding of the meaning of this more than just having that feeling itself? We try, let's try to understand what is the meaning of the times of refreshing. And because Christmas is all about God sending His Son to earth to be the Savior of the world, God meant to have our souls refreshed. God meant our souls to be breathed in with new life. God meant our souls, our life to be revived. So we, first of all, can understand that the times of refreshing comes upon you when you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Meaning, He knows you and you know Him and that you have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the time of refreshing for each one of us, for anyone who has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his or her personal Lord and Savior. And our scripture verses, Peter was telling them that, hey, you have crucified Christ, that they have killed him, you have killed him, you have rejected him, but told them, however, you did it out of ignorance. You did it out of ignorance. And we can see that in Acts chapter 3, verse 17. And let's read that. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. Just like some of the other believers and great servants of the Lord, who has done great harm to the Lord himself, even before they realize it. Paul himself said, said this about himself in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Peter and Paul said this to give emphasis on God's love in God's mercy. That in spite of our you know, intentional evil towards God, it has never diminished His love for us. The psalmist even says this in Psalm 103, Verses 10 to 12. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. And as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. So the times of refreshing is with the understanding that Point number one, that our sins cannot diminish God's love for us. Amen? God, that our sins cannot diminish God's love for us. While our mistakes and errors can diminish or even obliterate the love of others to us, but it can never diminish the love of God to us. Now, this truth can give us a refreshed realization in our lives that even if we repent, that if we repent, and be converted, as Peter says, God's love for you is never diminished. 
Now, the word converted does not mean that you change your religion and join us. What the Bible means is that when you repent, it means you do a 180 degree turn away from your sin and move towards God. Meaning you entrust your life and your soul to Jesus. Therefore, repentance and converted goes together. Now, going back, have you ever said sorry many, many, many times to someone hoping that you will be forgiven, but they just cannot or they won't? That's because forgiveness is a divine act. And the love of God is, the love of man is limited, but the love of God is not. And it takes a divine work in the heart of man to make him forgive another and not be affected by the sin of another. Now, to continue, Peter said, You did it ignorantly, but it has to happen, or it has to happen. It was part of God's plan. In Acts chapter 3, verse 18, But those things which God foretold by the mouths of all his prophets, that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. In other words, Peter says, even if you were not, uh, even if you were the one causing suffering to the Lord Jesus Christ, God already knew that. He foretold that. He knew it. Even Jesus Christ himself prayed to the Father, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Now, I must have read somewhere about what someone says that, you know, one of the mark of a good heart is when someone does you wrong, your concern is more on the understanding why that person did it more than making the other person understand what they did to you. That's a sign of a kind heart. But God the Father is more than just being kind. He is a good, good Father. That while He knows we have done evil, He knows our hearts as sinners, He also understands what He needs to do for us because He understands us. God's no, God knows that they were acting out of ignorance. That, they, that if they would have known, Scripture says, revealing the empathy of God towards man, that they would not have crucified Christ if they had known. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Can you see? If they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But God was always one step ahead of man. He is good and he has great allowance in his heart. He has great grace in his heart for all of us. So times of refreshing involves understanding that God is good, even if we are not always aware of it. God is good, even if we are not always aware of it. It must have pricked the hearts of those who were listening to Peter, that in spite of their error of the ways, or the uh, errors of the rulers, or the errors of the religious magistrate, God's plan turned out to be good for the good of man. It turned out well. God's plan turned out to accomplish what it purposed it to be, which was to save souls that day. In Acts chapter 4, verse 4, However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. Isn't it amazing to see that God's plan of salvation, which is saving man from their sin, and the carrying it out was not hinged at man's contribution? Everything turned out well. I have watched a lot of Mission Impossible movies, and many of the scenes involved impossible task portrayed to have been accomplished in the most unbelievable ways. Even if you know they are just movies, still you gasp, di po ba? You still feel anxiety. You fear. There is that tapag that something might go wrong, di po ba? Right? You understand that in the plot, in order for the mission to be successful, there's something like uh, figuratively that point A has to reach point D. That for point A to go to point D, it has to go to point B first. And the person responsible for point B has to do his part perfectly. Right? And for point B to go to point D, it has to go to point 
C. And the person in charge of point C has to do his part perfectly so that they can reach point D perfectly. Diba? And in the movie, all point persons have to do their part well in order to accomplish their mission, which seems to be very, very impossible. However, in Matthew 19:23 to 26, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you, that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. It is impossible, brothers and sisters, for a sinful man to enter the pure, holy heaven of God. In many points, we could have foiled God's plan. Or we think we could have derailed it. Or made it impossible for Him to save us. And yet, things turned out to be well. Peter said to the people, You tried to kill the Savior. You ignored Him. You rejected Him. But you know what? Here you are, listening to the gospel message, listening to me. And now you are realizing that no one can stop God's plan. Aren't you glad that it's not up to us? It's up to God. And times of refreshing involves understanding that God is in control no matter what happens. Amen po ba? God is in control no matter what happens. And we read that while Peter was preaching, the priests and the Sadducees felt so uneasy Because they were teaching and they were preaching to their people. And the Sadducees do not believe in resurrection. And Peter was preaching the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So they had to arrest him. They had them arrested, uh, Peter and John, and put them to jail. So the priests and Sadducees thought they want to have the control of the situation. They want to stop the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But interestingly... It was actually after Peter and John got jailed that the people began to think about their message and made the decision to believe in Christ Jesus. So the verse that we read a while ago in Acts 4.4, people got saved. It happened after Peter and John got jailed because God is in control no matter what happens. If He wants to save people, He will save people no matter what. Now, this pandemic has created a lot of unsettling feelings in our hearts. It has made all our plans tentative and uncertain. As a matter of fact, in our last staff meeting, the question to what is our next move or what is our next plan? The answer was answered, I believe, realistically and satisfactorily. And the answer was, we don't know. We really don't know what the next plan would be. But you know, in spite of all that, we can still rejoice in our times of refreshing, the refreshing of our soul because God is in control. Now, last week, we have stressed that Christmas was about God's rescue mission to man. The salvation of our soul is the time of refreshing. And for this Christmas, we reflect on the following regarding God's greatest gift to mankind, that our sins cannot diminish His love for us. That God is good, even if we are not aware of it. And that God is in control and has always been in control, no matter what happens. And with this thought in mind, may may we continue to enjoy Christmas, especially that we know what it means. That even if we don't have what we wished for, let us understand that if you have Jesus Christ in your heart, then that should be more than enough. Amen? And in a separate video, We, the Filipino ministry, would like to greet everyone a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year with a reminder in a song that even if we don't have what we wished for, we just have to be reminded that Christ is enough, that it should not stop us from celebrating the season. Amen? Let us pray. Oh, great God, we thank you for reminding us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a reason to be refreshed in our soul, in our heart, in our mind. For indeed, the greatest gift that you have given us really gives us a refreshing feeling 
that even if things are happening badly in our midst, we know that in the future, with the sure and relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ because of your promise, then we can have hope. We can look forward in a bright future, Lord God, that everything that is happening here, this is but temporary. But we know that we have a God who loves us. Now for a moment, I'd like to give this invitation. If you would like to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you know, accepting Him that does, does not mean you'll be, become a member of a church, but it means starting a relationship, having your soul revived, having your soul refreshed, because Christmas is all about God giving us uh, salvation in our hearts. You know, when you have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, He is your Savior. He knows you. He knows you to be a person who came to Him in repentance and He can claim you. When He goes to the Father, He says to the Father, Oh, I know this child. I know this daughter. This prayed to me and this person has accepted me as His Savior, as her Savior, and I'm saving him in the payment for his or her sin I paid for. So when the time comes when this person dies, I'm going to take him home. You know, that's Jesus Christ mediating for us. And if you would like to start a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, I would like to invite you to follow me in this short prayer and tell it to him sincerely. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. Please come into my heart. I repent of my sin. Forgive me. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. And I put my life in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So if you have truly accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you know the Bible says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become his uh, child of God, even to those who believe in his name. That's the Lord. That's the word of the Lord in the Bible. So if you have accepted him, praise God. Experience the times of refreshing in your soul. Now let's end in a word of prayer. And um, I'd like to end us in a word of prayer now. Lord God, thank you for the time that you have given to us to go through your word, to be reminded of the meaning of the season, Lord God, that you are our God has saved us. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you, Lord, that help us, Lord, to continuously understand that even if we don't have all the material things that perhaps this world entices us to have, having you is enough. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy to the only wise God and our Savior, to him be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. So again, thank you very much. I'd like to see you again next week. Online service here at the Filipino Ministry of Life.